It's a playground staple, a stationary ride-on cartoon animal that bounces up and down and rocks back and forth, courtesy of a huge spring underneath secured into the ground. The bouncy coil base is what gives this type of playground equipment its name, a spring rider. The spring rider is a playground favorite. To withstand years of rambunctious riders, it has to be solid and durable. Yet for a toddler to be able to rock back and forth, it can't be too heavy. That's why the spring is made of thick steel and the animal of lightweight aluminum. That sand core is comprised of two halves, each made with an aluminum mold, duck-shaped in this case. Workers fill it with sand and adhesive mix that sets into a solid block. They insert several steel support rods, fill to the top, and even out the surface. Then expose two hooks they'll later grab to extract the core half once the sand hardens in about 20 minutes. Meanwhile, other workers use an aluminum pattern to make each half of the duct casting mold. After applying a powder release agent to prevent sticking, they cover the pattern with a sieved mixture of sand and clay. They mount a frame around the pattern to contain the sand as they add more and more, repeatedly packing it down in all areas with a pneumatic ramming tool. Then they remove the frame and cover the sand with a wooden board. This provides a hard surface for the press, which now applies the weight of about four mid-size SUVs. Then they flip over the mold and remove the pattern which formed the mold cavity. The sand is now so firmly compacted that it holds the shape. One half of the sand mold has channels through which the molten metal will flow into the cavity. Workers now position several quarter-inch thick foam spacers in the cavity and place half of the core on top of them. The spacers elevate the core, creating a quarter-inch cavity between core and mold. The other half of the core goes on top. After placing spacers on top of that to create a quarter-inch gap on this side as well, they carefully lower the other half of the sand mold. Now they're ready to cast the duck. The melting point of aluminum is just over 1,090 degrees Fahrenheit. However, they heat much higher to 1,400 degrees so it'll flow faster and fill the entire cavity before beginning to solidify. They pour the metal through holes on top. It flows through the runners into the mold cavity, which is that quarter inch gap surrounding the duck-shaped core. About 20 minutes later, the metal has cooled and solidified. They break the mold apart on a vibrating sieve, releasing the aluminum duct and shaking out the coarse sand through a hole at the bottom of the duct. After cutting off excess aluminum that hardened in the runners, they grind down the seam, which formed in between the two halves of the mold. Next, they weld on aluminum handles for the child to grip when riding. These handles are cast in sand molds just like the duct. Workers grind down the weld and any sharp edges, making the entire surface nice and smooth. Next, a coat of polyester powder in bright rubber ducky yellow. Then a 20 minute trip through an oven to bake the coating, making it ultra durable. Now, delicately airbrushed with the urethane enamel paint the details that bring Mr. Duck to life. His feet, wings, bill, and eyes. The thick coil that makes this a spring rider is made of a flexible type of steel. They bolt a steel spacer plate to it, then hide the bolts under an aluminum cover. After attaching a footrest, steel again, they bolt the duct to the plate. All these parts, like the duct, are painted with baked on polyester coating. The spring bolts to a concrete block buried underground. Ducky and friends are designed to withstand even the harshest winters, letting children enjoy a little spring 
all year round.